Hey, hey, hey. Happy Tuesday. Come on in. Pull up a chair. The Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang Dispatch, brought to you by thegaminggang.com, which I happen to be the founder and editor-in-chief. So welcome aboard. Tonight is Tuesday, April 13th, 2021. This is live stream number 647 your first time joining me i usually spend the dispatch half of it the beginning portion of the show by sharing the latest in tabletop gaming news and then follow up with an unboxing of a board game or maybe we'll take a first look and page through a role-playing game book something like that so tonight i've got plenty of tabletop gaming news and i am also going to be unboxing and taking a first look at King of Tokyo Dark Edition from Yellow Games. So that is coming up in just a little bit. If you are watching live, well, the news usually takes about a half hour. If you are watching after the fact, then by all means, there will be timestamps. You can jump ahead if you want to uh, skip the news and just check out the unboxing and first look. So I do want to point out, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when the Dispatch streams live Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. It'll also let you know when I upload other videos as well, such as my review of World's Fair 1893. This is the Amazon exclusive from Foxtrot Games and Renegade Games Studios. This will be up later on tonight. That review will be live after the show. And it is the Gaming Gang review number 749. So yes, rapidly approaching the 750th review from the gaminggang.com. Now, all of them are not video reviews because for the first few years, we only did written reviews. But I think it's about half and half. I think overall, I think there's about 350 video reviews. So there is a lot there for you to take in. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for the latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. So if you are watching live, obviously this is a live stream, so that means there is chat available. It's not on screen. One of the ways that uh, I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay, but I do my best to pay attention to chat. So if you want to say howdy, or maybe you got a question, a comment, by all means, please chime in. And I will do my best to respond. So first out the gate tonight is the Motor City Madman. Yes, the Madman, one of our chat moderators, is with us in chat. Clint Gibson has just arrived as well. So uh, before we jump into some things, I see Clint's here. I keep forgetting to ask. Clint, did you not get a copy of the Symborum starter set PDF? I know you were one of the winners. That was a contest we had. Uh, gosh, was it last week? I think it was last week. Was last week Symborum week? I forget. I swear. I swear. This pandemic just every day just is the same day. It's like Groundhog's Day times 10. 
Yeah, it's not that bad. So, Clint, let me know. Because I know Boel from Free League Publishing, I believe, this is what I kind of heard through the grapevine from some of the other winners, is she actually sent out not only the starter set PDF, but the core rule book, the advanced player's guide, as well as I think it was the game master's guide as well. So she went all out with everybody who was a winner. So I thought that was very, very cool. Come on, Free League always takes care of me. So anyway, let me know, Clint, uh, if you are missing that, because I want to make sure that you get what you won, because everybody else got stuff. <laughs> so not everybody else, but the other winners did as well. Something else I do want to mention is uh, I buzzed off my COVID cut. So uh, it is uh, very short now. <laughs> I did, I did a buzz job on it. So, so sick and tired of like hair sticking out on the sides and just all along in the back, almost like a, well, it wasn't a mullet yet, but ugh, didn't like it. So I just buzzed it, buzzed it. Cause it had been a, a few months. My hair does grow rather quickly. I have to laugh because my best friend, Elliot Miller, who I mention all the time, who used to be on the gaming gang, used to be part of the gang. He's still part of the gang. He plays the games for us to review, but he just doesn't partake in the website anymore. He's got a ponytail now. And it's sort of like, what? So I was like, a ponytail? Okay. It's like, I mean, he I don't think he's had a haircut in a year. At least me, I have clippers. I'll just be like, whatever. Make sure I don't get it too close where I'm like, oh my God. So hopefully I did an okay job. So Clint says that uh, it was no, but it might be on their end. They don't know where to go. So Clint, do you, if you have a drive through RPG account, then that's where you had to go. You had to make sure that your email that you gave me was the same for your, uh, your drive through RPG account. And that's how Boel was going to send the PDFs. So if you don't have a, a drive through account, there's no way for her to get you those PDFs. Anyway, moving right along. Something else I want to take a moment before we jump into the news. I did want to send all the best wishes to my nephew, Cameron, who embarked on the biggest adventure of his life to this point today. Yes, he flew out for his basic training for the Air National Guard. So he left today. That's a picture of him at O'Hare at the gate and uh, I got to say I'm pulling for him. He's good. He's looking to train to be a crew chief uh, for C one thirties. So fingers crossed, hopefully all goes well. I got to be honest. <laughs> now I, I did not serve, but I have plenty of friends who did. I have family members who did my father was in the army. In fact, my, my father was in the army before he was a U.S. citizen. He was actually in the army when he came over from Ireland. And no, it was not the Union Army. <laughs> but um, I think he's in for a bit of a rude awakening because he thinks because it's, you know, the Air National Guard is, oh, well, basic training is not, not going to be as intense. Oh, it'll be as intense as the Ray or Air Force basic training would be. Well, we'll see. We'll find out. But I'm pulling for him. His Uncle Jeff is pulling for him for sure. All right. Anyway, so got that out of the way. Let me grab a quick sip here. And we will jump on into the news because Shilmill Games and Stronghold Games have a Kickstarter currently running to bring two new expansions to Martin Wallace's Australia. Here's the skinny on Revenge of the Old Ones and Tasmania. 1932. The desolate shores of a new world lie before the would-be colonists. They're on a mission to grow food to feed the war-ravaged populations of the world. A war fought against the terrible old ones. However, this new land hides a terrible secret. It is the final layer 
of those old ones not defeated in the war. They're about to rouse themselves from their slumbers and bring terror down on the settlers. At first, these attacks seem to be random. After some time, it becomes obvious that there is a controlling mind behind these evil creatures. Somebody or something is directing the hordes of zombies, Migo, and Shogoths, and possibly even Cthulhu himself. In Australia, Revenge of the Old Ones, you're enabled to play a game with one player controlling the forces of the Old Ones. This allows the game to be played by up to five players, as well as being able to decide where to place their forces. The Old One player can also summon terrible creatures from the Void to create even more havoc. Now you can raise Nearlothotep or call forth the Hounds of Tindalos to defeat the scourge of humans invading your lands. Damn you, humans! Let's talk a little bit about Tasmania. In Australia, humanity came to build a new world after a long war against the old ones. They failed. The old terrors were waiting for them and pushed them back to the coast. Now their only hope lies in a nearby small island, Tasmania. Will this be the promised land? Australia, Tasmania is a dual map expansion for Australia. It's because of the Z's, folks. It's because of the Z's I'm doing that. This dual map expansion is designed specifically for one or two players, or if you're playing with the Revenge of the Old Ones expansion, three players. One side has a fixed map that's surveyed for resources and old ones, while the other side is randomized through a set of 66 terrain tiles. There is a short Kickstarter video, so let's take a peek. Two new expansions are being added to the Australia universe. Introducing Revenge and Tasmania. In Revenge, players will be able to play as the Old Ones, legendary creatures who are enraged by humanity's intrusion into their territory. Add 30 new monster cards, as well as abilities for human players to keep the Old Ones at bay. Add an additional player seat, increasing the maximum players from four to five, or play in solo mode. In the expansion Tasmania, humans have fled the Australian mainland to escape the Old Ones. This expansion contains a new island territory with two maps. These new maps allow for new strategies to develop, including a play mode with 100% randomised geography. Use the hidden map and explore Tasmania, but be careful walking into the unknown. Be ready, monsters will attack quickly in this treacherous land. Order your copies of Revenge and Tasmania today The project to bring these two expansions to the masses is over 800% funded. It might even be a little higher than that now. You can reserve a copy of both expansions for a $59 pledge through April 22nd with an expected delivery this year, actually, this November. Nice. I like Australia. I thought it was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. I, I got to be honest. I think Elliot really likes it a bit more than I do because to me, and I, I like Martin Wallace. Don't get me wrong. I mean, some, some people have a, you know, an issue with him. It, it has nothing to do actually with his game designs, but I tend to find that Martin Wallace's designs always have like one little wrinkle that you're kind of like, huh? <laughs> hmm. Do I like that or do I not like that? Now, like I said, I like Australia. and uh, But I, I think other people out there probably like it more than I do. Really like the fact that we've got a couple of new expansions available for it, especially one which will allow a player to take on the role of the old ones. Sweet. Very cool. Very cool. Speaking of uh, Stronghold Games, if you follow the Gaming Gang Dispatch, you know that for some reason after Stephen Bonacore retired, it was like, I didn't hear anything 
from Stronghold Games. I mean, nothing. No news, no anything. And it's not like I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, I got to get, I got to get more review copies of stuff. Because to be honest, some of the really light games that Stronghold does are the really abstract games. Like they were doing a bunch of roll and writes uh, for a while. They were very abstract. They're really not my, they're not in my wheelhouse. You know, they're not really in my ballpark. So I would never ask for those for review anyway. But I didn't hear anything. And then Stephen Bonacore touched base with the woman who now does, she does PR for Stronghold and Indie Boards and Cards. And I think she does a couple other companies saying, hey, you know, get back together with Jeff. Shot me an email. She said, oh, okay, what do you want to, what do you want reviews, review copies of? And I said, nothing <laughs> right now. I just, I'm just looking to make sure that you send me the news. And this is, once again, I don't hear anything. And then, what was it? Yesterday, I got an email saying, hey, uh, it was like CCing me in, saying, hey, uh, make sure Jeff's getting copies of all our releases and stuff. And I'm like, how about just sending me the news? <laughs> thought it was weird. Thought it was weird. Plus, Stephen Bonacore is doing game reviews now. I don't know. He's like the gaming godfather or pod. Well, I know he was the pod father before, but I, I think it's he's like gaming godfather or something. Ah, Steven's a good guy. He's one of he's one of my best pals in the industry. We go way back. All right. So uh, a gray day in Flaming Huron. If join us in chat, very cool, very cool. So uh, they're talking about a little bit about Australia and Flaming Heron is from Australia. <laughs> Saying there's no great old ones roaming the streets there. Australia is a, a pretty good game. Like I said, uh, like I said, Elliot likes it more than I do. But it is kind of interesting. And it's it's kind of odd that like the continent had not been colonized until like the 1930s. But it's, uh, strangely enough, it's actually set in a timeline from a Neil Gaiman story. So it's, it's like in that, uh, what is it? A study in Emerald, I think it's called. It's been a long time since I read it. All right. You're going to notice there's a theme that's running through some of our news tonight. And it's pretty obvious. Moving right along, arriving in July from Yellow Games is Sticky Cthulhu. Here's the deets. Cthulhu, yellow for them. Cthulhu has been awakened, and now it's time to eat. The Ancient One spreads his tentacles and devours anything he can grab. Sticky Cthulhu takes the fun of Sticky Chameleon in a version more insane than ever. Roll the dice, catch, and eat the cultists, and make your opponents go crazy. Electrifying, delirious, slimy, Sticky Cthulhu is insanely hilarious. Anytime anybody tells you something's hilarious, I can guarantee you it is not. Now, I'm not saying this isn't fun. I'm telling you it's not hilarious. Or people don't understand the definition of hilarious. In Sticky Cthulhu, each player has a long, sticky tentacle. And the table is covered with six types of creature tiles in six colors, along with a few investigator tokens. To start a round, someone rolls the two dice, one showing a color, the other a creature. Then everyone rushes to grab the appropriately colored creature tile by slapping it with their tentacle. The round doesn't end until someone removes the tile from their tentacle and holds it in their hand. This player scores a point. Then you do it all again. As you collect deep ones, these point tokens, you'll suffer curses that will force you to wield your tentacle in unusual ways. Whoever first scores the predetermined number of points wins. Sticky Cthulhu is for two to six players, ages six and up. Plays in around 25 minutes, which is a lot longer than I thought it would play. It does carry an MSRP of 1999 and it's hidden stores this summer. Nice. Very cool. If you got kids or you like silly games, this is probably going to be up your alley. If not, 
Probably not. All right. Next up, today marks the launch of a new Kickstarter to bring the Symborum fantasy role-playing setting to 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Here's the latest about Ruins of Symborum from Free League Publishing. The claimed setting of Symborum has enticed and fascinated fans of tabletop role-playing games since the launch of the game in 2016. Now, this dark and mysterious world welcomes an even wider audience with the production of a player's guide, game master's guide, and bestiary adapted for 5e, published under the open gaming license. Note, you're going to need the core 5e rule books to fully enjoy Ruins of Symborum. The rich and nuanced Symborum setting revolves around the Ambrians, a civilization that two decades ago were forced to flee their ancestral soil after a devastating war. Their new and promised land borders on the vast forests of Davakar, covering the remnants of the Empire of Symborum, which fell into ruin hundreds of years ago. Brimming with natural resources and mythical treasures, the forest calls out to the Ambrians to be explored and plundered, but the road into its depths lies far from open. Not only are the shadows beneath the foliage, I should say foliage, English, Jeff. English. Beneath the foliage, fraught with danger, monsters, and infectious, infectious corruption, there are also the elves of the Iron Pact who have vowed to die to keep anyone from disturbing the ruins of old, warning that the ancient evil of Symborum stirs in its sleep. Now you can join in the adventure. Seek out the barbarian clans to trade or to plunder their treasures. Establish a base of power among princes, guilds, or rebellious refugees in the capital city of Indaros. Survive encounters with trolls, dark-minded beasts, and undead warlords. But always remember the warnings spoken by the wardens of the forest. Tread carefully and do not disturb the ruins of old for the horrors of Davakar are about to awaken. There is a two-minute Kickstarter video, which, unfortunately, the music that uh, Free League Publishing is using will set off a copyright infringement flag on this video. So we're going to take a peek at it. I am going to leave the mic on because there are a lot more images in that that are going to be shared. But I do want to point out there was no voiceover on this. There's no voiceover whatsoever. So it's not as if you're missing somebody sitting there talking about the 5E ruins of Symborum or anything like that, you know, with a booming voice. The acclaimed world of Symborum adapted for 5E. Now I'm not going to sit there reading everything. So uh, as this plays, a great is pointing out this hit Kickstarter today. Yes, I did mention that. But Agrede says there's a uh, Kickstarter today called Orbital Blues a la Cowboy Bebop. I had not heard of that. I have not checked that out. Uh, but I will because I am a big Cowboy Bebop fan. Although I don't know if it's, you know, a, a true Cowboy Bebop or if it's influenced by it. Anyway, we are looking at a video here for Ruins of Symborum. So I guess it's, you know, not proper etiquette to be talking about some other Kickstarter while we're watching this video for this one. <laughs> I am a fan of Symborum. We, all, we just had a Symborum week, and we took a look at uh, quite a few of the... Well, I have looked at quite a few of the books. I have reviewed the starter set. I have reviewed the core book. The Advanced Player's Guide, the Game Master's Guide, as well as the Best Yuri Reviews are on the horizon. So stay tuned for those. But I, I really do dig this setting. I think the setting is very cool. I say it all the time, and I'm sure people are tired of me saying this. But it is a dark fantasy world. It is not a grim, dark fantasy world. It's uh, This civilization has survived a great war. They have not been wiped out. 
I really like that. Now, of course, granted, you are looking at that uh, there's there's just a small enclave of survivors, really. There's, there's, you know, not all that many left, but still very, very cool setting. Now, this Kickstarter did launch earlier today, funded in the first few minutes. You can reserve copies of the Player's Guide, Game Master's Guide, and Bestiary in hardcover for a $116 pledge through May 6th. There are other pledges. You can get it in PDF if you want. There's a few different things that are out there. Great Day's already pointing out it's it's at $100,000. And the funny goal was $23,000. But yeah, within minutes, it was already funded. So expected delivery of this for the physical books is next February. But I do understand that if you are getting the PDFs, and of course the PDFs do come with the physical books if you're going with that pledge, they are expecting sometime in Q4 that they will have those ready and uh, they will share those with you. So very cool. I think that's pretty nice. I'm kind of curious And this is something that I kind of wonder about a variety of different settings that are adapted for 5e. I wonder how well they go over because fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons is its own beast. It's got its own mechanics to it that I find um, unique, I guess we'll say. Uh, I, I like, for an example, if I see an adventure that's been, adapted for, let's say, Swords and Wizardry, right? It's kind of an OSR. I can tell right away if they've adapted it from a 5e game because there'll be things like, you know, perception checks. <laughs> and you're like, what? That's not, that's not an old school. What are you talking about? So I'm kind of curious. I wonder if anybody out there in chat or, of course, if you're watching after the fact, uh, if you want to comment in the comment section, I'd be curious, have you played other games that have been adapted to 5e? Because there are a few of them out there. Just kind of curious. So uh, Pickles has arrived in chat to join us tonight. Very, very cool. Let's move on to our next news piece. Uh, Once again, staying within that theme I was talking about, Chaosium Inc. has a hardcover slipcase set. For the Call of Cthulhu campaign, Horror on the Orient Express on the horizon. Here's what I know. The classic Call of Cthulhu campaign spanning the European continent returns in luxury. Horror on the Orient Express is back in print with an updated two-volume set, making it more digestible than ever. Three identical men found dead in the same room of the Chelsea Arms Hotel each of them stabbed through the heart. The unexplained killings see the investigators embark on a thousand-mile journey on a legendary rail service to Constantinople, the gateway of the Orient. Back with an updated layout, the entire campaign is now spread across two epic hardback volumes and includes a fold-out map of the route across Europe. This is the definitive edition of Horror on the Orient Express. Includes 19 scenarios, across 700 pages. Horror on the Orange at Express is a modern classic. The adventure takes the intrepid investigators from London to Paris and to the ancient city of Constantinople. Optional scenarios set in the Dark Ages, Gaslight Era, and the Dreamlands allow players to experience the origins of pivotal moments of the campaign. Additionally, a scenario set in the modern day acts as an epilogue to the generation-spanning story. It's going to include premium maps, player handouts, and full details on all NPCs and monsters, which will make running the campaign easier than it's ever been. The hardcover slip case volumes will clock in at over 700 pages. It's going to carry an MSRP of $89.99. Gotta say, it might be available now. Might be coming in June. That's the weird thing because distributors are saying this is arriving in June. I know you can order it from Chaosium Inc.'s website and 
I should point out, I am going to get to take a peek at this as well because Michael O'Brien is sending this along. We've got some Call of Cthulhu stuff heading my way, so we might actually do a Call of Cthulhu week here at the Dispatch, so stay tuned. I will mention that this is actually the 2014 edition of Horror on the Orient Express. This is not a completely new revamped edition for Call of Cthulhu 7E. So keep that in mind. Now, according to Michael over at Chaosium, that is something that they have plans for, but we're talking years away. So, so just to point that out. Don't want anybody thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be like massive Nair Lothotep where it's kind of revamped and it's it's all for 7E C of C. It is not. But this has been out of print, so this will give you an opportunity to grab it. You can get the PDF, of course, over at Drive Through RPG. I believe it's fifty nine ninety nine, and if that's the case, by all means, spend the extra thirty bucks and get the hardcovers. All right, my final news piece: one of the hot sellers on Dungeon Masters Guild is the first volume of Puzzle Masters. Here's the dope. Greetings, traveler. You're invited to the grand opening of Enigma's premier puzzle dungeon. Congratulations on receiving this illustrious invitation. You'd best be on your way because dragons don't like to be kept waiting. Challenge and delight your players with the premier issue of Puzzle Master. Inside this supplement, you'll find 10 puzzles suitable for every level of play, accompanied by beautifully rendered handouts. Puzzle Master also includes a unique dungeon that utilizes the puzzles to craft an escape room style experience. This title includes the aforementioned 10 puzzles, which are suitable for use in any adventure, 20 handcrafted puzzle handouts for you to print or digitally share with your players. There's a unique puzzle dungeon play experience, difficulty ratings for each puzzle and suggestions on how to adapt them to your own adventures, a series of hints, to help your players solve each puzzle, as well as suggestions on how to run each puzzle, either in person or digitally. You can score this 44-page 5th edition supplement written by Celeste Konowich, James Intricasso, and M.T. Black. So those are three of the heavy hitters over at Dungeon Masters Guild. You can grab this in PDF for $5.99. Sweet. This looked kind of interesting. That's one of the things that I, I think game masters really have a hard time putting together. And that is puzzles and cool traps for dungeons. I think that can be a real sticking point. Uh, especially I think traps. I don't, I don't think we see as many puzzles as we used to in the OSR. You know, back in the old days. You know, back when I was a child and we were, we were playing that, that crazy advanced Dungeons and Dragons. You see, you used to normally have some puzzles, some pretty unique traps in the adventures. I don't really, traps a little bit, puzzles not so much in the modern uh, Wizards of the Coast 5E releases. I mean, they're there from time to time, but but not a lot. So, Grady mentions that somebody did a 3D model of the train from Horror on the Orient Express. That's pretty wild. So, all the train car floor plans are in 3D. Cool. That's pretty sweet. All right. So, that is it for the news. Of course, I was just talking about Dungeon Masters Guild. And, of course, Dungeon Masters Guild is one of the one bookshelf sites. So if you are going to visit, say, oh, I don't know, Dungeon Masters Guild or Drive Through RPG, please stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banners. That way, if you do happen to make a purchase, I get a little portion of that sale, and all those nickels, dimes, and quarters 
really do add up and help keep thegaminggang.com around. So, and there are a lot of people out there who who do use those, and I really, really do appreciate it. Really helps out. So, uh, that, like I said, is it for the news. What we are going to do here, we zipped through that fairly quickly, even if even having a couple of videos with it. So, tonight, I am going to be taking a first look, doing an unboxing for King of Tokyo Dark Edition from Yellow Games. Designed by Richard Garfield. Artwork is provided by Paul Mafion. The game is for two to six players. Ages eight and up. Plays in around 30 minutes. It is available now. It does carry an MSRP of $49.99. I should point out, the standard King of Tokyo is sold out. It is no longer available. You might be able to find it from an online retailer, but I don't know. According to... Yellow Games, it is out of stock with them. All right, so if you are watching live, we're going to jump on into the unboxing. If you're watching this after the fact, this is about the point where you're going to see a commercial. It's not that long. Just deal with it. And we will jump on into the unboxing right after that. All right, so here we've got King of Tokyo. So Pickle says uh, they missed yesterday's live show, but they watched it this morning. Always appreciate it. Thank you. So let's get the shrink wrap off here, first of all. So this is supposedly a collector's edition. Meet the dark side of the dice with new powers, terrifying monsters, never before seen artwork upgraded components as well as a new path to victory is this box torn no oh you know what this slides off i was gonna say because if you notice if you've looked around all the all the like the, sh the shots of the box do not have that on there so that's what that was all right cool deal okay i'll be the first to point out I have not played King of Tokyo. I have not played King of New York. I actually have some of the uh, the promo monsters in that that I've gotten at some of the conventions from time to time. But, uh, yeah, I've never played it. So I thought originally that the Dark Edition was actually going to be less tongue-in-cheek because the monsters can be kind of silly. But I don't think that's the case because there's like a cyber bunny monster. So we got the rules. So let's take a look at the rules first. Very, very short. I do understand this is a, you know, dice chucking, push your luck sort of game here. Uh, and you've got your your monster standees. I've, I've seen people play it. I just have not had an opportunity to play it. So a great A says that... Uh, his family has two copies. I'm assuming he's talking about two copies of King of Tokyo. So, uh, overview and goal. King of Tokyo Dark Edition is a game for two to six players where players take on the roles of giant monsters, otherwise known as kaiju. Ready to do whatever it takes to conquer Tokyo. Roll the dice, buy power cards, build up your wickedness, and smash everything to bits to gain victory points and win the game. And if you're feeling villainous, you can even try to eliminate all your adversaries. Last one standing will be declared victorious. So Grade A says, yes, they wore one of their copies of King of Tokyo out. That's why they had two. So showing us our components, wickedness tiles. So we're showing the setup as well, how to play. Roll the dice, resolve your dice, enter Tokyo, buy power cards, end your turn. So on your turn, you can roll the dice up to three times. You can stop rolling at any time. We get a, an example of dice rolling. Effects of Tokyo. Example of a five-player game. And some clarifications for power cards and wickedness tiles. So rules are all of, what was that, eight pages? Yep, eight pages. 
got some examples, got plenty of images in here. Easy peasy, I must say. All right, so I'm going to double check. Looks like uh looks like we're in focus. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit of yesterday's video was out of focus. So thankfully it wasn't the entire unboxing. So what do we got here? We got some sort of like power tokens almost. Dual sided. So uh relatively thick cardstock here for that punch board. We've got the, I guess these are the wickedness tiles. So I'm going to take a guess that these are wickedness tiles here. And those are powers over here. So we got Barb's underdog, have it all. Final roar, defender of Tokyo, poison spit, starburst. And then the wickedness here. Full generation, eternal, devious, skulking, sky beam, evil lair. Or maybe these are like Tokyo powers. Because I thought I thought the powers are power cards that you buy. Well, we'll find out. Continuing along because looks like next up. Oh, we've got an insert here. All right, come on. <laughs> come on, insert. So this is the board. Oh, okay. So it's just like so. So that is our board here. So that is in Tokyo. And that is out of Tokyo. And it's a little warped. Got to say, it's uh, just a hair warped. You'll notice it's not, not laying flat. Well, that's easily remedied. So there is the Tokyo board. We have our monster cards. So we've got the Kraken. Unleash the Kraken. So we've got dials here. So health and guess maybe that's power. So we've got dials for that. We've got the Mecha Dragon. A la Mecha Godzilla. We got the Cyber Bunny. As I mentioned, that's kind of kind of silly there. We got the Alienoid. Speaking of aliens, uh, anybody watching uh, Resident Alien on Sci Fi? I thought it was pretty good. I liked it. So, just the uh, first season just ended, I think, last week. We got Gigazower, who appears to be kind of a Godzilla like monster. And then we got the King. Of course, that looks like Kong. So, we could easily put together our own movie version of Gigazor versus the King with these as well. So, we've got our standees here. And these are pretty good cardstock as well. So there's the king. There's the kraken, I can tell. That's the mecha, what was it? Mecha dragon. The alienoid. There's the cyber bunny. And gigazor, gigazor. So that's cool. So, we, of course, we've got some stands to pop those into. These are good size, too. I don't have a massive hand, but then again, I don't have a tiny hand either. So, all right, moving right along. Madman says, hadn't seen Resident Alien yet, but it's been recommended. Yeah, we enjoyed it. Uh, Elliot was watching it, too. I recommended Elliot check it out, and uh, he started to. So we got our deck of cards here, which I guess I might as well zoom in. Because it looks like everything is going to be pretty small. That's uh, left for us to take a peek at. So I'm going to zoom all the way in. Give it a second to, to autofocus. Come on, autofocus there. Once again, I have to remind everybody that the, uh, the Panasonic G85 that I use isn't the greatest as far as autofocus. All right, so these look like these are the power cards. I guess they're all power cards. Uh, cardstock's a little thin. I'm a little surprised. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a little thicker cardstock on this, seeing that they're, it, they crow that they're, you know, like, uh, the component quality has been upgraded or something like that. It's got commuter train, wings. 
skyscraper, nuclear power plant, jet fighters, lunar powered. I like the artwork, though. I think the artwork's pretty cool. I, uh, <laughs> what the? Detriptivore? Okay. Burrowing. Even bigger. Uh, so Disavowed 92's popped in. Good to see it, Disavowed. They say that the, the cards are not kept in hand, but they are shuffled. I would think. I would think they get shuffled, uh, which usually with thinner card stock, they, they tend to be uh, much more prone to chip. So high altitude bombing, camouflage, giant brain, freeze time, poison quills, complete destruction. So once again, I have not... Uh, so Disavowed says the quality really isn't an issue. They just sit on the table. So should I guess that as an example here, so Mecha Dragon is red. So all the red cards are the powers that Mecha Dragon gets to use. Once again, like I said, I, uh, I, I haven't played. So, Flaming Heron says, uh, yeah, you do want them to put up with some abuse, at least with his group. So, Stretchy, yeah, it's got to be, because uh, Pink is the Cyber Bunny, Made in a Lab, Gourmet, Rapid Healing. I have to admit, I do like the artwork. And it is darker. The whole theme is darkness. Death from Above, Corner Store. <laughs> friend of children flamethrower media friendly metamorph alpha monster eater of the dead background dweller we're only making it stronger <laughs> opportunist evacuation orders oh another evacuation orders an extra head alien origin Plot twist, herd color, <laughs> spike tail, gas refinery, frenzy. So disavowed says the dice in that set rock, shrink ray, jets, energize, regeneration, energy hoarder, psychic probe, better than the other kind of probe, fire breathing, nova breath. Tank, vast storm, parasitic tentacles, <laughs> herbivore, like an urban vore, unstable DNA, super jump, reflective hide, natural selection, zombify, monster pets, hibernation, and nanobots. Cool. Nice. Like I said, I, I do I do dig the artwork on these. So we've got the various different power cards for each of the monsters. So Grade A says there's one card that lets you copy any other card a player has. And the kids love that card. All right, what else do we got in here? Okay, so we've got some looks like we've got some cubes, plastic cubes. No. Maybe those are like little plastic lightning bolts. We have some like counters for each of the creatures. Here's our bases. Here are the dice. So these are the custom dice. Wow, these are nice. Uh, these look like they glow in the dark right there. I would not be shocked if those glow in the dark there. Then we've got these other dice. And... Uh, we, that looks like that is everything from here. And let's get back in focus. There we go. So we've got the various different dice. They are cut dice. So that is very cool. Always like that. They're nice, big, chunky dice. Digging that. Once again. I don't have the biggest hand in the world, but those are good, chunky dice. So uh, these, I guess, according to a grade A, are 
dice that you uh, get from power cards. So Flaming Heron's asking, are they normal size D6? No, they are not. I'll tell you what. I just happen to have a dice bag here. Let me see. Okay, I was going to say, don't tell me if I, <laughs> if I reach in this bag and don't pull out a D6. That is a pretty standard size six-sided die. Here's another one. So, yes, you can see these are nice and chunky. So I guarantee the kids will dig those. Let's see. So these are. Yeah. Okay. So these are little green lightning bolts. Uh, this That's the power icon. Might not see that too well against the uh, the dark background. So let's put them over here. Give you a better look so you can see. And there's quite a few of them in this bag here. So we've got that. We've got the, the stands for our monsters, which hopefully when they go back into the box, they actually will stand up or we got enough room when we lay them down. Every once in a while, I'll see a game. Uh, a prime example of this is uh, the Robotech game that came out the most recent robotech game came out from solar flare the uh you put you put like the mecca and stuff like that in the stands but then they won't fit in the box so uh there have been discussions uh, a couple of people now i think a grade eight and disavowed have pointed out the bolts are what you pay for your powers for the power cards and then we have these little markers. And they are not stickers. So they look like they're laser printed on. And that is each of, it looks as if each of the different monsters has their own little icon here. So... That's the bunny. That's the cyber bunny. That's the alien. This is the Gigazower, I think it was. Uh, I'll take a guess. That's the king. This is Mecha Dragon. And what was the other one? What's the what's the blue? Okay, so. That's kind of weird. I think it's Gigazower, wouldn't it? I know. I'm sitting there like, huh, what goes with what? So here's the alien, right? Here's the cyber bunny, like so, right? We got that. We got the alienoid. We've got Gigazower. We've got the king. We've got the mega dragon. And that would be the Kraken. I think this is more green than blue, but this looks a little more blue. All right, so that is all the goodies here. And we've got a cool insert. So we put our dice back into here. Let's pull this down so you can see. So we got the cool insert. We're going to put our chunky dice on in. Then... I thought it was kind of funny. We actually have these actually slot in here. All right. Which one's going where? Does it? Nah, that doesn't look right. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. It's like, okay, Jeff. I'm going to fit that square, square peg through that hole. I swear. I'm going to bang it in there. All right, so we've got those goodies. And it goes, uh, ah, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Throw it in there for now. So we have the six monsters. We've got the cool, chunky dice. We've got our, our monster standees. We also have our stands, as well as our power bolts so i guess i should be putting them like this 
because the deck of cards is going to go there. And we've got the game board, the little game board. We've got the tiles. We've got those markers as well. We got the rules. And that's what we find when we take everything from King of Tokyo Dark Edition outside the box. And of course, I will have a review of King of Tokyo Dark Edition in the very near future. Yes. I know King of Tokyo is a, a big hit with Elliot and his family. So hopefully in the next week or so, we are going to be getting together to do some more gaming. So fingers crossed on that. So uh, Grady says that uh, those were conditioned counters from power cards. So Disavout said they found an empty barrel of monkeys at a yard sale, picked it up, and they used that for the peeps with little hands. That's kind of funny. Nice. Once again, do want to point out, King of Tokyo Dark Edition is from Yellow Games, designed by Richard Garfield. Artwork is provided by Paul Maffian. Hopefully I'm close on that. The game is for two to six players, ages eight and up, plays in around a half hour. It is available now. Does carry an MSRP of $49.99. Important to point out, King of Tokyo is no longer in stock at Yellow Games. I don't know if King of New York is. So I would also take a guess that you can probably port over the other monsters as well from the other games. I'm not positive, but I would think you probably can. All right, so that is it for this time out. Once again, do want to point out, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you do, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when the Dispatch airs live Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube, it also lets you know when I upload other videos, such as tonight's review of World's Fair 1893 from Fox Trot Games and Renegade Game Studios. We'll mention this game receives a score that is very rarely handed out over at the gaming gang. Now that could it mean it's really great and it could mean that it's not good at all. So I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to find out. But that review will be up later on tonight so of course keep your eyes peeled if you're interested and of course when you're not watching videos on the gaming gang channel be sure to visit the gaminggang.com for all latest in gaming news reviews and a whole lot more you know the drill get your geek on at the gaminggang.com those of you who hung out live watching taking part in chat thank you very much always appreciate people Taking some time out to kick back with me as I just ramble on. Hey, you were teaching me all about King of Tokyo tonight, so that helped. But of course, I do know that there are a lot of people out there who don't have an opportunity to watch live. Everybody who tunes in, doesn't matter if you're watching live or you're watching on Memorex. Thank you very, very much for joining me on any one of my videos. Of course, everybody enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, or whatever day it happens to be when you're watching this. I will be back tomorrow because we are going to be unboxing and taking a look at Commands and Colors Samurai Battles from GMT Games. I know a lot of people are excited about this. So we will be taking a peek at that on tomorrow's show. And of course, as I wrap up all my videos during this never ending pandemic, I certainly hope all of you out there are being smart and staying safe. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, 
if you haven't subscribed to the Gaming Gang channel yet, click right here. If you'd like to see the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch, click right up there. And if you want to trust YouTube's algorithm to give you something to watch, click right there. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and everybody, please wear a mask.